Uh, this is the famous Julian and Sandy. If you remember Julian and Sandy, I rather like this uh, cartoon. <clears throat> Two very camp characters um, in Soho. Oh, but there we go. Uh, here's the kind of uh, etymology of it. This, uh, this Professor Paul Baker here at the bottom, as you see his name, uh, was uh, he's a professor of linguistics at Lancaster University, and he, he's written. Uh, an amazing book called Fabulosa, which is goes back to uh, uh, looking at the history of all of this. But uh, basically, it's broken down here into it goes back as far as the you know the level of hundreds, etc. Thieves, cant, uh, poultry, slang, uh, ancient um, you know uh, early Yiddish. Some words that have been used, Romany, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, the mollies here are were male brothels, I suppose, uh, in the 17th, 18th century, which uh, used to run, a, particularly in London, I suppose. Uh, and uh, they, they were sort of left alone and then occasionally they'd get raided and the, the occupants would be dragged out and put in the stocks and uh, have things thrown at them, sometimes be beaten, sometimes they'd die. Um, so that, well, it wasn't like... Uh, that's a regular thing, but just now and again for entertainment, we used to drag them out. So we've got Paliari and Palari, which are kind of original sort of ended up as Palari. We've got theatre slang, camp comedians, um, round the horn, et cetera, et cetera. All of this uh, prior to um, the repeal of the homosexual laws, I suppose. So. Um, and, and, and but it still continues in in a, in a small kind of way. But so there you go. Um, Molly House is a Molly House in Manchester, which is not a male brothel, but it's a it's a gay bar um, on one, two, three. It's actually on four floors. Uh, it's quite trendy actually. Um, um, but it's interesting that it's taken the name of uh, something slightly disreputable and and. and maybe Sort of popular in the comment in, in you know it's quite a trendy place, not uh, exclusively uh, visited by gay people. I think there's a lot of uh, more, more mixed crowd nowadays. Um, thieves count and itinerant language um, in the in the days when. There were tramps and people wandering around the country looking for work or, or whatever, or you know, maybe maybe slightly disreputable people. Um, used to leave messages on walls. Uh, this is the kind of language they use. So that all these symbols represent what they say, um, warning people or helping people who are coming along behind them, whether it's worth coming here, whether they should avoid it, whether, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um Good place for a handout there. Thieves nearby, dangerous dog here, et cetera, et cetera. I do remember when I was a small child that, uh, uh, that there used there were, I think they, we think we call them tramps without meaning anything derogatory, who used to travel around looking for casual work and labor and stuff, or somewhere to sleep sometimes. And I think they, with the tail end of using some of this sign language that uh, you know helped anybody following behind them. Uh, this is some of the the, the thieves cunt. Um, some words which most of which mean nothing to us nowadays, but uh, the, 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 perhaps munch uh, we recognise as food. Uh, vidi maybe to see from from the Latin and from the Italian. I can't think of anything else which particularly relates to uh, modern language, but there you go. Um, now, okay. Ros Rosa, Ros, policeman. Sorry? Ros, Rosa's policeman. Yeah, okay. Well, that comes up later on because they use that quite a lot in Polari, but uh, yeah, so, so some, some of these words kind of filtered down mm -hmm. to. Uh, uh, okay, so you've got to listen very carefully now because there may be a test at the end of this. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> Okay, um, so I'm going to teach you some Polari words now. Okay, so remember them carefully. Okay, 
This is a Latin. Repeat after me, Latin. 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 Thank you very much. Um, Latin is a house, a flat, place where somebody lives, basically. Okay. Um, this is a very fancy Latin, but I mean, uh, it doesn't have to be like this. It could be, you know, fallen down old house, but there you go. Um, and this is a cottage, which um, is the Polari word for a, a lavatory, in fact. So, um, you know, but then maybe, maybe you've heard of it. Cottaging. Yeah, yeah mm. that's right. Uh, Bona. Um, Bona means, what does Bona mean, do you think? Good. Good. Yeah, it's kind of from the French or from the Latin or whatever. Uh, bona, uh, it, it, ignore, I've just found something with the word on it, that's all. It's nothing to do with all the wood floors <laughs> or all the rest of it. <laughs> Good. Okay. Uh, now then, the, the Polari word for uh, eating is mangiare or mangiare or something, which uh, comes from the Italian, mm -hmm. French, uh, so manger in French, mangiare in Italian, but uh, there you go. And then the next one is um, bevy, which is fairly commonly oh. used these days, but uh, in fact, um, it comes from the Polari word for presumably a shortened form of beverage, but there you go. Um, mm. and it, it means alcoholic drink, of course, it's not not tea or coffee it's if you can have a bevy you're not gonna have a hot chocolate or anything but there you go um and here we have good old who's this Beer uh, rhyming slang for in no sin no gin so <laughs> if we're gonna have a drop of vera we're gonna have a drop of vera lynn which is a, a gin okay kind of a gin oh, so. right. <laughs> there you go okay uh next word is dolly this is of course uh the famous Brad that's Pitt. a relief i thought he was gonna have to rhyme with brad Pitt. Uh, the word dolly means handsome good looking attractive whatever else i just Selected somebody who might be a little bit dolly. There you go. Uh, and there we have drag, which originally uh, meant clothing. Um, clothing. Another word for clothing is schmutter, which I think comes from the um, Yiddish. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, drag, of course, now means. Uh, something else other, but other than clothing it was kind of travesty i suppose dressing in the opposite of the sexes okay. anyway there you go um here's a good one slap uh theatrical word meaning makeup or whatever else so slapstick but slap is uh, used in the theater for I, my mother used to use it anyway. I'm going to put my slap on before I go out. So it's kind of, it's filtered down into everyday life. I still say that. <laughs> Do you? Okay. Yeah. Uh, and here we have, what have we, we got here? Mints. 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 Uh, describes an exaggerated way of walking or carrying on with yourself. So a very kind of effeminate way of walking. And there is the... Mince chant, which is a, an effeminate way of talking, but there you go. Here we have, well, oh, remember Ajax? Uh, mm -hmm. there, is a, there is a word in Polari which means next to, which is if you wanted to say, talking about somebody who was next to, I don't know, the bar or the wall or whatever, you, you didn't want them to know you said Ajax or Ajax over there. Okay. And here's the word bold, which is used mm. much by Kenneth Williams on the radio. Any bold, um, which means extravagant, flamboyant, etc. There you go. Oh. Oh. I chose this one because it was an interesting face. Uh, a lot of words in Polari are 
backward spell. So this is an ECAF, um, which is a face, uh, E-C-A-F, F-A-C-E, backwards, and uh, shortened sometimes into the word eek. So if we're talking about somebody's face, we'd be talking about that eek or that ECAF. Okay. Uh, who is that person? This is not a person. This is a, a, constru a construction of a Neanderthal man, actually. I think it's, a, I don't think it's actually a real person. I think it's a, something that somebody's made for, from a structure. Ogle means eyes, for obvious reasons. Um, so we talk somebody's, somebody's got blue ogles. It means they've got blue eyes. And ogle fakes or glasses. Uh, these happen to be a special type of, but any kind of glasses would be ogle fakes. Okay, I hope you're paying attention to all this. Okay. Um, okay. Aunt Nellying um, is listening in or listening carefully to something. So uh, if, you, if somebody was Aunt Nellying, there'd be listening to somebody else's conversation, okay? How do you uh, spell that, Aunt Jelling? A-N-G. How do you spell uh, that? Your aunt, your father's sister, Aunt Nelly. Who put the jelly on the telly? Say again. <laughs> Auntie Nelly put the jelly on Auntie the Nelly, telly. yeah, yeah, your Auntie Nelly, or yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, here we have lallies. These are legs. These are very kind of muscular, masculine legs, but the word is lallies. Okay. <laughs> um, and the word feely means young, uh, presumably connected to fee or fees or filia or filly or whatever. But the word specifically means young. And here is the famous NAF, which people use a lot nowadays, but um, it basically means awful or rubbish or I won't tell you what the abbreviations for because it's rude. But there you go. Um, I've missed out all the rude words as well. There's lots of rude words, but I think I'm bowing to your sensitivities and sensibilities, I uh, missed them out. Now you've no. got the sketching. Nanti means nothing. Uh, so Nanti or Nantwiles is, is a word for nothing. And measures are is money. If you've got no measures, you broke. Okay. Um, and is so your wallet would be your handbag. Uh, the national the national handbag is the dole. So if you're on the national handbag, you're on the dole. Okay. <coughs> uh, queen. <laughs> Omi. Uh, it means a man. Uh, really rated to all. Uh, Omi Pallone means a gamer. I mean, this is a spectacular game man, but uh, there you go. It's kind of. Um, Omi Palo. So alone means a woman. So an Omi Palo would be a gay man, and a Palo Omi would be a gay woman. There you go. Um, Palari uh, is, is mostly was mostly used with men, but um, for obvious reasons, or the, because there was no illegality about being. A lesbian, but nevertheless, uh, it, it's filtered through. Okay. Uh, to send somebody up uh, was basically to take the mick. So we've got this thing, whatever the words were said, spoof, parody, mockery, travesty, burlesque, caricature. Okay, so. Uh, and Raya is hair backwards. Um, mm. Kenneth Williams used to use that one a lot. To see or to look at is to vada, vada, look at that over there, okay? And uh, 
this lovely one here is well what's this one and um, campsite camp. camp camp it's camp anything which is camp which is flamboyant <laughs> outrageous over the top uh, there you go but i think this is rather camp camp actually but there you go it's sort of interesting and then there's butch and femme um somebody who is excessively one or the other so if, so if a woman is very mannish she'd be bigger butch if a man was very effeminate she'd be femme etc so there you go uh Rosa, as we mentioned before beastman uh, and there was a tendency to use female names in an illiterative form so that you get to uh, Jennifer Justice, meaning the law, the police, or whatever. And of course, Lily Laws was another one. For, but, uh, and a policewoman is known as a Sharpie. So there you go. So, um, okay, so Kenneth Horn, um, played by May. Nell. Uh, Julian, the Hupanic character, played by Bill. And Sandy, the Ultra Camp. Um, character played, of course, by myself. So there you go. Um, shall we go? Yeah, a lot of people home is not just where you live, but a place to entertain your friends. At least that's what I think. And recently, when I celebrated my birthday, I decided to throw a party. Well, I didn't want the trouble of catering myself, so when I saw an advert for boner caterers, we could handle everything, I gave them a ring. And next morning... Ding dong. Hello, I'm Julia. This is my friend Sandy. We are boner caterers. That is to say, Jewel and me, we can cater for every function. Yeah, from your hump ball down to your intimate at home. Just give us a free hand and we'll give you a, a do your guests will never forget. Now, what's this occasion? It's my birthday. I'm 39. Do you hear that, Sam? 39. Round the neck, he's 39. Mm. So you'll want a cake. Uh, we can do some, uh, we can do you something pretty bizarre in marzipan. How about Dundee, Jules? Yeah, I could let myself go in Dundee. <laughs> he could let himself go in Dundee, Mr. Orney could. Oh, I could do something in a sponge with a fruit filling. Yes, in three tears with a motif. What sort of a motif? Well, the sort of thing people are associated with. For Ringo Starr, we done a set of drums. For Sterling Moss, we done a racing car. And for Sandy Shaw, we've done a huge pair of feet in marzipan. With glacé cherries for the toenails. Uh, I think just a simple cake. And what about the rest of the food? Oh, it depends on uh, the, what sort you have in mind. I mean, you can have your standing up running or your sit down knife and fork. Your standard fingers works out cheaper. Yes, I think a cold buffet is best. Would you like us to lay on a turkey? Well, I hadn't planned on a cabaret. Oh, he's bold! Oh, he goes too far! <laughs> now, drink it. What's your plan there, Trish? Well, two dozen bottles of eggnog for a start. But I don't know anybody who, who drinks eggnog. We do art face. He likes eggnog, Jules. Three eggnogs and he lets his rye right down, don't you, Jewel? Yes, Jim makes me maudlin. And you don't want him maudlin all over your guests. He gets quite lacrimose on the gin and he blurts it all out about Bogner. He had an experience in Bogner, didn't you, Jules? Yes, very naff it was. And when I've been on the gin, it all wells up in me. And up comes Bogner. Oh, we don't want Bogner coming up. So it's two dozen bottles of eggnog. Uh, I didn't know you were coming. Of course we're coming. We wouldn't miss a party Mick Jagger was at. Mick Jagger? 
I haven't invited him. Well, we have, and David Frost, and Peter Cook, and Dudley Moore. You've got to have your actual celebs, so you'll never get reported in the glosses. <laughs> you want to see your ink in the glosses? Um, what about my other guests? Well, let's have a look at your list. Hmm, don't want him. He sounds dull. She must be 80 if she's a day. No, they're out. They're all out. But that only leaves me. Sorry, Ducky, but you're out as well. With the people we've invited, you just wouldn't fit in. Ta -da. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well read. <laughs> well read. <laughs> so we've only got 10 minutes yet. So when I, what I was originally saying, um, where and when was Polara used? In the 30s, the 70s, gay bars, <laughs> gay pubs and bars, particularly in London, but also in other major cities, especially Manchester and Liverpool. Um, Theatre, dancers, chorus boys, male impersonators used it. British merchant navy ships, especially passenger ships like P&O, uh, a lot of the people who worked on the ships were gay. Uh, and of course it preceded airlines where many of the serving stuff on airlines okay it could be used in public because it was a secret language uh, why was it used protection and secrecy it excluded outsiders and allowed gay people to hide their sexuality uh, could also be used as a form of attack to insult and humiliate others sometimes humorous camp performance of it. I, I, and it also helped newcomers to be assimilated, a sense of belonging, if you like. It could also be an act of defiance, a kind of secret way of kicking out at the laws which suppress them. Why don't we use it now? Uh, it was spoiled to some extent by Julian and Sandy because it became, you know, used by the, known by the public anyway, uh, because of uh, partial discrimination in the late 60s, there was less need for it. And the liberationists wanted to move away from the camp stereotypes. It was seen as archaic or Russian. Uh, it's, a, it's a British phenomenon. It didn't translate to an increasingly global world. So, um, But it's an important part of the gay heritage, not necessary to be revived in anything other than historical reference. There are, there are small groups still trying to keep it alive. There are Facebook groups and things. Uh, however, my elastical thought on it was one suspects, however, that in many parts of the world where homosexuality is still illegal and subject to draconian punishment, a similar kind of argot will exist to protect the oppressed members of these communities. And I also think probably uh, in any society where, um, you know, they're, they're, a certain section of it is oppressed, then there, there will be some kind of means of communication which uh, absolutely in, in a sense of like slavery and patois and things like that you know that people will find some way of um, communicating with each other without getting themselves into mischief yeah, all right so ah. here, here are 10 sentences um, which I would like you to translate based on the fantastic so lecture that you've just received okay oh god Stop so looking at me. Uh, the pretty man with the uh, with the knife legs. legs. Okay. What have you got for that? Stop what? There's no face. money in your wallet. So okay. make this your last drink. Uh okay. Yeah. I'm skint, so make this your last one. Yeah, okay. Part of the part of the Polona jets the bar. I think she's a sharpie. Um, look at the ones at, that are at the side of the bar. Mm. Look at the woman. She's a police woman. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Let's go back to my latte. It's nothing here. Let's go back to my house. It's it's, house. it's it's not nice <laughs> in here. here. Okay. <laughs> Your riot's a mess and you need to get some new schmutz on. Oh, yeah. Your hair's a mess. Your hair's a mess and you, you need to get, to get some new, new clothes. Yeah, get your hair cut and buy some new clothes, yeah. Uh, the, ca the, the camp homie with the thick ogle fakes tried to send me up last week. 
the over the top man with the thick glasses tried to yeah. I don't know with the fake glasses try tried to do me down last week tried to take me off last week tried yeah to okay. to take the mickey out of me last okay. week Wait, yeah okay. with the glass yeah. see that only pallone in the nuff drug she's always on nelly <laughs> right. see that butch woman in the horrible Dress. Clothing, dress. Well, actually, no, you have to change. Always I know me, Pallone. Oh, me, Pallone is the. I know me, Pallone is a man. Oh, oh. I see that man in. Well, but you'd be first to drag. So it's see that camp. Girls see dress. That gay man over there in in the awful clothes. Yes. He's, he's listening into other people's conversation. Oh, uh, the. Uh, Look at the uh, butch uh, person over there. He's very bold. Uh, when, he, when he's had a few forward drinks. Forward when he's had a few drinks. Very flum yeah, he's very outrageous or flamboyant. Campus of rower. Campus of rower. Oh, I like that one. <laughs> That's good, that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Can we use that one, please? Okay, how about this one? Nanty Min's chant. Jennifer Justice just came in. No, 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 no funny chatter. Yeah, uh, police woman. Police has just come in. Yeah, okay. police woman. Law has just come in. Yeah, okay. Isn't is mince a walk? An exaggerated. Well, walk? yeah, but it, yeah, mince yeah. mince is it, it means uh, exaggerated basically. Exaggerated. So mince walk is one thing. Mince chance is exaggerated over the top talk. So, um, okay. Vada the e calf by the cottage door, drenched in slop. Yeah, see the face by the by the toilet. Covered in makeup. Covered in makeup. Yeah, okay, there's the there's the answers. So. Mm. Stop over in the Dolly Armory with the boner lollies. Stop looking at the good-looking guy with the nice legs. There's ninety measures in the handbag. We run out of cash, so drink up. Order oh, the pallone. See that woman next to the bar? I think she's a police woman. Let's go back to my place. It's boring in here. Uh, your hair needs cutting. It's time you've got some new clothes. That's somebody talking straight to his friend. That camp only with the thick ogle fakes. The effeminate bloke in the horn room glasses trying to take the mickey out of me. Lost me. Uh, look at that queen in the horrible shirt. He's always listening to people's conversations. Uh, Barn of the butch number of his old when he's had a few bevies. So that very masculine guy over there. He gets very flamboyant when he's had a drink, turns into a right Nelly. Okay. <laughs> See, it's John, Jennifer just said, watch what you're saying. That guy's a policeman. Really good. Well done. I, I think uh, yeah. Billy and Percy need a Polari moment in the musical. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, um, <laughs> there you go.